In today's video, we will be exploring dividend investing and touch a little bit upon bonds. In an earlier video, we learned what dividends are. And in the interest of not milking this video, dividend investing is an investing strategy used to generate wealth via dividend paying stocks. There are a couple of ways to go about creating or following a dividend investment strategy, so let's explore some of those. The simplest and most straightforward of these centers around ETFs or mutual funds. If you remember from our previous video on index funds, indexes can be tailored to anything and everything. From one that follows carbon neutral stocks to a sector based one like healthcare stocks to one that focuses on just good dividend paying stocks. An example of this would be something like the Charles Schwab's U.S. Dividend ETFs, or SCHD. These are highly automated and traditionally low-fee options, granting you the possibility of buying multiple stocks that generate dividends without the headache of having to pick them yourselves and doing the proper allocation and balancing and risk mitigation. It's just the easy way of doing this. Which brings us neatly to the second way that you can formulate an investing strategy around stocks, specifically stocks that pay dividends. You can find individual stocks that offer dividends and make a portfolio manually picking from multiple sectors, ensuring that these are good quality stocks that do pay dividends. This approach used to have a very alluring price benefit for long-term holders of dividend stocks because most of these large corporations that provided dividends had something called a DRIP or a dividend reinvesting plan. Under these plans, you could buy $1,000 worth of share or whatever amount, pay the associated fee of entering into the trade, and then you would just let it run automatically. And what I mean with that is it would then reinvest your dividends into that particular stock. This type of scheme used to be very popular because of the fact that, that it was quote unquote free to reinvest your dividends into the particular company that offered the drip plan. But due to the rise of zero fee trading, most brokers offer this as an option nowadays, and you'll be able to automatically reinvest all dividends paid, even if they come from an index fund. And now you're thinking to yourself, well, now I just have to sit here and scour the internet, look for all the high paying dividend stocks, and I'm just good to go. Well, you would be wrong. Like all investments, you need to do due diligence. And more importantly, you need to be on the lookout for something called a dividend yield trap. This is where a company will pay a very high dividend yield, think maybe something like 10%, but the stock price is under extreme pressure and constantly dropping. Would you want a 10% dividend, but losing over 20% of your value in that company? That is one of the negatives associated with dividend investing is that you can fall into things like yield traps. Now, that was a negative. Let me give you a positive. A positive would be the dividend aristocrats. These are companies that follow a set of rules and have demonstrated for quite a while that they will be a reliable source of dividend income that increases on a per share basis throughout a long period of time. You might be wondering what those rules might be. Well, they're actually pretty simple because there's only four of them. They have to be a member of the S&P 500, so they have to be within the largest companies of the U.S., they have to have increased their per share based dividends every year for the last 25 years. They have to have a minimum market capitalization of over $3 billion. And they have to, on average, trade at least $5 million of trading volume every single day for the last three months. As you can imagine, most of the dividend aristocrat companies are titans of industry. Most people have heard of these companies. They are also considered safe. But that does not mean that they are untouchable. Since 2019, at least 20 companies have lost their dividend aristocrat status due to precarious economic situations that led to a dividend cut, or in some cases, just outright not paying it anymore. It is also worth noting that as a group, the aristocrat index funds, which track these 65 companies, traditionally do underperform the S&P 500 during bull runs. But and this is something to keep in mind, they can outperform it during bear runs, and for the most part, they do. Dividend investing is also one of my preferred methods for starting a new investment strategy, or even just beginning to invest. While you do sacrifice the explosive returns of some of the more lucrative single stock picks, kind of like Tesla, it is one of the few investments out there that will give you a tangible result fairly quickly. 
what do I mean by that? Well, even if a stock remains flat throughout the year, or even if the market only moves up 1%, you still get paid your dividends. If the market does poorly and your investment drops 5%, you still get your dividends. And those dividend payments are a tangible way of you seeing progression on your wealth building story because you're able to actually see it without having to sell or even buy more of the stock because you're being paid out from that stock. It is as tangible as it can get in investing outside of maybe perhaps something like real estate. And now, since I did promise to talk about bonds, I'm going to deviate a little bit from dividends by putting a huge asterisk next to them. Aristocrat or not, dividends are optional. Tomorrow, Dover, the king of aristocrats, with over 67 years paying increased dividends, could wake up to some new financial reality and decide, next year we're not going to pay dividends anymore. And while that possibility is highly unlikely, it's something that you should always keep in mind when investing, because it's something that can happen, even if remotely improbable, shall we say. Now, if you're looking for an investment that has no such option of just deciding not to pay their dividends, that's where we can introduce bonds. Government bonds, or sovereign bonds as they're often called, are as safe as you can get on an investment in the market. Bonds are a type of loan. When an entity, in this case the government, needs money to fund its day-to-day activities or to fund a big-ticket project, they take out these loans. They offer them to us, the people. In exchange for us buying these bonds, the government agrees to pay the original value of the bond and also interests on that money that we have loaned them. For your troubles, of course. Now, while this debt is not collateralized, if the government reneges on paying it back, well, let's just say, I hope you like leather and living in post-apocalyptic style communities, because that's the route that we're headed. That's why most bonds say backed by the full faith of the U.S. government, using the U.S. as an example. That is kind of the metric, though, of if you're going to get your bond paid back to you, how reliable and faithful that government has been to date paying those bonds. The U.S. has an extremely good rating versus a place like, for example, Argentina, which has unfortunately defaulted on making its payments at certain junctures in its history. Now, due to how financial markets work, most countries will always strive to pay back bonds, even if they do default on them. So there's always room for negotiation in those particular scenarios where a country cannot pay them back at the pre-arranged pricing. However, that was just a brief look into bonds and how they work a little bit. Not necessarily anything in depth, just they can pay you back the money that you invest into them and you get a little bit of interest out of them. Not exactly how stocks work, but it is a substitute for somebody hunting for dividends due to the fact that bonds are so safe. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a like. If you have any comments or feedback, please leave a comment. And as always, if you really like the content, please subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you next time when we do a deep dive into bonds.